Welcome to this video on the Contax G1 camera. The Contax G1 was an automatic exposure electronic rangefinder camera using aperture priority automatic exposure with manual override aimed at the amateur market. It is an autofocus camera that has centre weighted metering. It takes lenses of the Contax G line made by Carl Zeiss Yashica. The G1 was the first of the Contax G series 35mm autofocus rangefinder film cameras. There are two versions of the Contax G1, a silver label and a later green label one. The Contax G1 has a single central autofocus point. Introduced in 1994, the camera has a built-in motor drive for film advance and rewind. The film speed range is 6 to 6400 ASA in one third of a stop increments and also DX coding supports over the range of 25 to 5000 ASA. Metering is centre weighted only the range of shutter speeds is from 1 second to 1 2,000th of a second in manual mode and from 16 seconds to 1 2,000th of a second in aperture priority mode. The shutter speeds are quartz controlled and stepless. Shutter flash sync is 1 100th of a second. An electronic cable release can be attached to a custom socket. Multiple exposures are supported. Exposure compensation of plus or minus two stops is available in one third of a stop increments. TTL flash with contact flash units is supported. Automatic exposure bracketing is available up to plus or minus one stop in one half stop increments. The main controls on the Contax G1 are the on off switch which also incorporates the AE lock and shutter release. The exposure counter panel. The focusing wheel. The exposure compensation dial and shutter speed wheel. The ABC mode lever. The flash hot shoe with TTL connector pins. The display panel with camera mode and drive mode indications and optionally an indication of whether the camera is using DX film speed reading and a low battery state indication. The subject distance as detected by the autofocus is also displayed. The ISO button. The drive mode button. On the back of the camera are the socket for the electronic cable release, the viewfinder cover and diopter wheel. On the front of the camera are the lens release at the side of a lens mount, the electronic self timer LED, the PC sync port, the film backdoor release catch. On the bottom of the camera is a tripod socket, and the battery compartment that takes two CR2 batteries. and the manual film rewind button. The main power switch has a shutter release in the middle of it. The power switch goes from off to on to AEL for auto exposure lock which saves the current metered shutter speed value. The shutter speed is set by rotating the shutter speed dial. Once the camera has been taken off auto exposure, by pressing down the release button in the centre of the dial and rotating the dial from the exposure compensation range to the shutter speed range. The film speed can either be set to DX for auto film setting with DX coded films or manually. The film speed is specified by pressing down the ISO button with the camera switched on and holding down the button for about two seconds. The display will then start flashing. Pressing the drive button causes the value of the film speed to be increased and pressing the ISO button causes it to be decreased. The value desired is set using the buttons and then the camera is switched off to save the film speed setting. DX mode can be selected using this method. In automatic exposure mode, exposure compensation is set by rotating the shutter speed dial in the exposure compensation section of the shutter speed dial. 
Compensation range is plus or minus two stops in one third of a stop increments. The film rewinds automatically when the end of the film is reached. It can be rewound part way through a film using the manual rewind button on the bottom of the camera. The camera is switched between autofocus and manual focus modes by pressing down the lock on the focusing dial and rotating the focusing dial either to or from the auto position on the dial. In manual focus mode the focus distance is set by simply rotating the dial. There are two distance scales on the focusing dial. An inner scale with white lettering that is used for the 90mm f2.8 lens only and an outer scale with black lettering that is used for the other lenses. The camera supports auto, that is aperture priority automatic, where the aperture is set on the lens and the camera sets the appropriate shutter speed. There is also a manual exposure mode where you set both the aperture and the shutter speed, and B for long exposures and X for flash sync. The modes are selected by pushing in the mode lever release lock on the top of the shutter speed dial of the camera and rotating the shutter speed dial to the required mode. Automatic, B or X or one of the shutter speeds for manual mode. The drive mode button enables you to select single frame advance, continuous advance or multiple exposure mode. The camera also has an electronic self timer supporting a 10 second delay. The drive mode is set by pressing down the drive button to cycle through the different drive modes until the desired mode is reached. The autofocus system behaves differently between single and continuous shooting modes. The diopter lens can be adjusted using the diopter wheel. The ABC mode enables a series of three exposures to be taken, one at the set exposure value and one each above and below the metered value by the exposure bracket value. The bracket value is set using the dial. Three frames at 0.5 stops bracket. Three frames at one stop bracket. The cable release socket is used to connect to Contax cable release and other compatible accessories. The Contax G1 uses the Contax cable release S or cable release L type cable releases. An LED on the front of the camera blinks while the self timer is active. Setting multiple exposure mode enables two exposures to be made on the same frame. After the second exposure, the frame mode resets back to single shot. There is a PC sync port for use with a flash that does not use a hot shoe. You have to ensure the shutter speed is 1 100th of a second or lower. The camera also has custom functions. See the manual for more details. The camera supports TTR flash metering with contact flashes. The G1 is compatible with later contact flashes in TTL mode, although it will not support all of the features of the TLA 360, although second curtain sync is supported. A flash can be connected using either the PC sync port or the hot shoe. TTR flash only works via the hot shoe connector. In automatic mode with a contact flash attached that supports TTL metering, the camera automatically switches to 1 100th of a second flash sync speed. Sometimes a lower flash sync speed is set depending on the camera mode. The viewfind illustration from the brochure is shown here. The viewfinder displays the shutter speed with over and under exposure indications. There is also an indication of when exposure compensation is in use and a flash ready indication which also doubles as a flash confidence indication. In autofocus mode the distance to the subject is also displayed in the viewfinder. 
If the focus distance cannot be determined, the viewfinder shows marks at either end of the viewfinder focus scale. In manual focus mode, the viewfinder shows the focal deviation as a bar, indicating either front or back focus, and the correct focus is determined by altering the focus to reduce the width of the bar to a minimum. The viewfinder zooms to show the correct angle of view with the 28, 35, 45 and 90mm lenses. The 16 and 21 mm lenses have external viewfinders that fit in the hot shoe. The G-series lenses were optimised for use on a rangefinder system and lack the extra optics required for mirror clearance used for lenses on an SLR. This resulted in an increase in quality in some of the lenses as the wide angle lenses can use different designs that protrude back into the camera body such as the Biogon in place of the Distagon used in the SLR designs. The layout of the planar designs is also different from the SLR planars. The 90mm sonar design seems unaffected and its performance seems very similar to the sonar design used on the SLRs for the 85mm f2.8. The G lenses were introduced in two stages, but all of the lenses except the zoom lens can work with the G1. However, some lenses require the G1 to be upgraded to the green label standard to support them. This is a return to manufacturer upgrade, but can be done by the owner without dismantling the camera, though it is not straightforward. Unmodified silver label bodies support the 16mm, 28mm, 45mm and 90mm lenses and the contact Shishika lens adapter. Support for the 21mm and 35mm were added with the green label upgrade. There was an adapter produced for mounting contact Shishika manual focus lenses on G-series cameras. It had some preset focal lengths that were used to set the viewfinder on the camera to the correct angle of view. They need to be manually focused using the dial on the lens, although with some of them the rangefinder could be used to get the focusing distance to set. There can be issues with some lenses with too wide a front element when using the autofocus, and only some of the contact Shishika lenses can be supported by the viewfinder zoom. There was a flash, the TLA 140 made for the G1, other contact flashes work as well. There was also a data back, filters and lens hoods, and an adapter for use with an external battery pack. The early G1s had a silver label in the film chamber and lacked built-in support for the 21mm and 35mm lenses, and these lenses will not work on the camera. A comparison of the lens data between my G1 silver label and Howard's G1 green label which has an earlier serial number but was returned for upgrade, showed different numbers in the 28mm, 45mm and 90mm lens data tables. I have seen it claimed in an online review that some G1s were shipped with incorrect numbers programmed in them that caused them to focus at the wrong distance, and this would seem to lend credence to that. The autofocus performance of my silver G1 prior to the lens data upgrade I performed was appalling when using the 90mm lens and also poor when using the 45mm. There has long been differing opinions on the performance of the G1's autofocus, varying between it is appalling particularly with the 90mm and it works so long as you are careful about checking the focus distance and its user error. It may simply be that the difference is down to having the correct values programmed for the lens data or not. My G1 seems to be working a lot better since I changed the data in the lens tables to match that in the green label G1. I do not know how many silver label G1s may have this issue. Fortunately, the lens data numbers can be changed on the camera. Thanks to Howard for lending me his green label G1. Later G1s had a green label in the film chamber. These had built-in support for the 35mm and 21mm lenses. Some silver label cameras went back to the service centre and were upgraded and have the green label fitted. Someone called every X new X day on the fotrio.com forums posted information on how to upgrade lens support on the G1 using the G2 factory service manual as a guide. The G1 silver label can be updated to support the later prime lenses via the manual adjustment mode as described in the factory service manual for the G2. The incorrect data in the 28mm, 45mm and 90mm lens table can also be updated using this mechanism. There are some differences between the G1 and G2 in terms of the layout of the data. The location of the lens data seems the same. 
There are some differences in the lens table parameters that are used between the G1 and G2 according to the respective factory service manuals. And the values supplied on the web do not match with the data I have read from the G1 green label that I have for the 21mm and 35mm lenses. So upgrading the lens data entries works, although I would suggest using numbers from an upgraded G1 rather than those from a G2. Other data such as the autofocus adjustments appear to be in different positions and there are different numbers of autofocus data points in the G1 to the G2 and the calculation used is different. The autofocus performance of the camera, once updated to the green label standard, has its limitations and steps need to be taken to minimise the number of autofocus shots taken. There is an additional manual of useful hints on focusing the lens that was supplied with the camera. In single shot drive mode, the camera will not fire if it has not been able to focus. The best advice seems to be to always check the focus distance indicated on the camera to check that it looks sensible before shooting. The value displayed on the top LCD screen is more accurate than that displayed in the viewfinder. And if it looks wrong compared to the estimated subject distance, then try focusing on something with more contrast or vertical lines in it at the same distance until you get a value that looks sensible. And then lock the focus using a half press of the shutter release and while holding the half press on the shutter release reframe and fire the shutter. In continuous drive mode the camera will always fire the shutter whether in focus or not and you have to monitor the focus display in the viewfinder to check whether the subject is in focus before shooting. There is a custom function that locks the exposure when you half press the shutter release. You may wish to turn this off if using the focus lock technique. The primary problem with the Contax G1 is the limitations of the autofocus system. This limits the camera to a fairly slow, deliberate approach to taking pictures in practice. It is definitely not a good choice for a point and shoot approach. The viewfinder is not that bright and can flare badly, causing the viewfinder display to be difficult to read. The camera is probably best used in single shot mode because of the advisability of checking the focus distance before shooting. The relatively low maximum shutter speed can be a bit limiting. The early silver label cameras with the incorrect lens data for the 28mm, 45mm and 90mm lenses perform very badly and the 90mm lens is practically unusable. Unfortunately you cannot tell by looking at a silver label G1 what lens data it has. You should be prepared to upgrade it if looking at buying one. The only real reason I can see for buying a G1 is the lens range which is of high quality although the range is limited mainly to wide angles. The need to use focus lock on occasions when the camera has problems focusing is problematic when using a cable release on a tripod as you cannot half depress the shutter release with a cable release. The exposure compensation dial can also get rotated accidentally and affect your exposure value. The G1 is one of the newer contacts and the film counter LED is known to fail quite often. They also can leak green fluid from the drive screw if they have been stored for a while and sometimes mounting a lens can be tricky as it refuses to lock. If considering buying a G1, I would determine whether it is a silver label or a green label and I would consider the need to do quite some work on getting a silver label camera up to the green label standard, particularly if intending to use it with the 45mm or 90mm lenses. I would look for one in good condition and consider getting it serviced. I have added some pictures taken with the G1. I have included some crops of the full size scans.